Get in the net. Yes, come on. My first fish of the week from Gigantica. Well pleased with this one. He went 30 pounds, four ounces. It's a fish called Jason's fish. Doesn't get caught very much. Absolutely perfect mouth. Just like a lot of the fish at Gigantica. And uh, he was taking on two balanced tiger nuts in the tree line swim. I moved down here uh, yesterday after losing the fish in Baxter's. I'm going to move back up to Baxter's tonight because I baited that swim. And it's a great ploy on busy lakes to bait swims and not fish them. And if you can flip between the two, you can keep the runs coming. This is my rig for fishing with tiger nuts. Slightly different from my boily rigs, basically because the tiger nuts are so light. And when you've got a very light hook bait on, there is a tendency to get tangled. So I've combated that in several ways. First of all, I've got IQ2 on, which is a soft fluorocarbon, but still has some anti-tangle qualities. This is the 15 pound breaking strain. But most importantly, at the, at the uh, lead end there, I've got an anti-tangle sleeve. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna push everything away from the tubing in flight. So it's gonna stop it from all folding back and getting around the tubing. And what obviously when it hits the bottom, it also helps to push everything out flat so the hook link is nice and straight. Now, just talking from the bait down, I've got two tiger nuts on there. And what I've done is drilled each of them out with a nut drill and put a cork plug in. It's sort of three quarters in the top nut and a quarter in the bottom nut. And when that sits on the bottom, the hook's gonna lay flat and the bait's just gonna hover above it. I don't want it sitting up high off the bottom because all them tiger nuts that you feed, they're all buried in the sediment. The fish are rooting around for them and I don't think you want something that's standing upright. So basically the bottom nut is almost touching the bottom of the lake bed and that's the way I think you get the most bites. The hook is a size two curve. Looks a bit excessive for that little tiny hook bait, but I really like, when I'm fishing bottom baits, with a big hook and a small bait, I think you convert a lot more pickups into fish in the net. And that's tied a D-rig style, and what I've done there, tied my favorite whipping knot onto the hook first. You make a big loop underneath the hook, and then a little tiny tag end poking out, grab the front of the loop, and wrap it around the hook once going up the hook. Then wrap it around again going down, and carry on going down, towards your fingertips probably four or five times and then the tag end pulls everything tight and then the knot is formed. You then cut off that tag end, pull it up the hook and then basically the rest of the hook link is tied from then on. So the little tiny micro rig swivel goes on next and then I simply tie the knotless knot. So that's a six turn knotless knot I've done there but make sure you come out of the hook you can see there on the inside of the hook. So the point side of the hook that is so important to make the hook turn and catch hold. And that stiffness that's coming out of the eye there is going to help the hook turn as well. So you don't need shrink tube or line aligner or anything like that. That's going to turn the hook well enough on its own. And then in the middle of the hook link to help it lie out flat, I've got a large size sinker. I don't put any putty on this because putty is another thing that can cause tangles. Because it's soft, if it does wrap around the tubing, it tends to bite there and you wind in the morning and you've got a tangle. So that's done about halfway down to help everything push out. If you put it too close to the hook, what tends to happen, the hook sinks fastest and you get a loop up off the bottom of the hook link. And I recommend you always put your rigs in the edge, drop them in like you would on a cast and see how it sits on the bottom. Do it half a dozen times, 10 times, and just make sure it's sitting out nice and straight and nice and flat every time. And then the anti-tangle sleeve, that's a dark matter one, so it's got tungsten in it. That helps to hold everything down on the bottom. That's pushed over a quick change swivel that's something that I'm field testing at the moment and that's just gone into a standard lead clip and you can see there I've got a cog lead on but I'm not fishing it cog style. And the reason for that is they cast almost as far as a standard lead in the same size and it means I don't have to bring two sets of leads with me. So if I'm going to swap over to boilies I'd fish it cog style because the boil is that much heavier, it keeps everything apart in flight and you don't get tangles. And then last but by no means least we've just got a rubber connector on the back of that lead clip and that, it's got a bit of dark matter tubing pushed into it. This again is a prototype, so it's very light in colour because the bottom here at Gigantica is light in colour. And that just completes the setup. I think it's really important to have something behind the lead that again stops tangles, but it also protects the fish. So when you're playing the fish, it's that that's rubbing up and down the side of the fish, not the main line. So that's my Tiger Nut rig. I'm fishing it over probably half a dozen spoms of tigers and some chop nut and um, a little bit of hemp as well, or I'm just feeding tigers. In this situation where I'm catapulting them out, I'm just putting half a dozen catapult falls of tigers over two rods, and that's what's doing the business. So if you're not fishing boilies and you want to get it out there without it tangling, that's what I recommend.
backing Baxters, 21 rod lengths, two balanced Tigers, and that all important IQD rig absolutely nailed him. And uh, that drive home is gonna seem about two minutes long. Wicked.